What's going on, America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner, where I try to make sense out of nonsense. And he's back. Who am I talking about? No, not Hank Johnson, who I love destroying every chance I get talking about Guam tipping over. No, not, um, let's see, Wine and Juan Williams. No, not him. Mm -mm. Who am I talking about? None other than little Brian Stelter. That's right. He's back. So apparently over the weekend, he weighed in on the president's decision um, to do the airstrike in, in Iraq against um, Salami. And here's Brian's take on it. He's warning us because, see, you have to understand, little Brian Stelter is kind of like the watchman. He's he's like the, the gate man that protects truth and dignity and and, and all of those things, integrity. Remember, little Brian Stelter works for the most upstanding, non-motive-having, non-biased uh, news station, uh, CNN. Yeah, yeah, remember the commercial? Uh, well, this is an orange. Now, people may tell you it's not an orange, but it's an orange. And this is, a, yeah, see, remember that? They told us so. They told us that they're the most upstanding uh, news organization and so, therefore, it must be true. So, here's little Brian Stelter weighing in and informing his audience on how skeptical they need to be concerning the president's decision about uh, this attack. So, let's listen in real quick. Let's see what little Brian Stelter Trying to restore de deterrence in the region. Pompeo making the case on six different television shows okay. today. Now, Americans and many others around the world are instinctively suspicious and distrusting of what Iranian leaders say. Okay. But what about America? See, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. See, notice what he does. He tries to make sure everybody knows that, okay, even though I'm preparing and prepping you all to attack the president, I'm warming you up, I'm going there. I'm going to try to soften that by trying to highlight the negativities of the Iranian leadership in this guy. You know, because see, I don't want to come across as non-patriotic and exalting the Iranian government and their leaders over our own president. So I got to give a phony acknowledgement of how skeptical we should be of their leaders. But then, but then make a drastic comparison to their evil regime to ours. See, y'all ready for this? Let's listen. Notice he said, but what about our leaders? President Trump squandered his credibility at the very start of his presidency. And many officials in his administration have followed him down a path of deceit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So now notice this. Remember, little Brian Stelter is not non-biased. He's not anti-Trump. He's not working for a propaganda network. But he goes on to say that President Trump has squandered his credibility in the beginning. Now, what does that mean? That means he has nothing left. He's calling him the prodigal son. You had all of this money, this buildup. You went out and kicked it. Party to the beat and rhythm of the night. Dancing to the round of drinks for everybody. And woke up next day realizing, I ain't got no more chips. Can't make it back home. I'm broke. Okay. Looking in the pockets. No cheese. He squandered it all. So what he's saying is everything that comes out of President Trump's mouth is not credible. Even the results that he gets, all of these promises that he made and all of the results that come from the promises, um, they can't be held, you know, credible. All of the stuff that I see with my own eyes and hear with my own ears, it, it, it can't be credible. So you mean to tell me that this quote unquote fake booming economy ain't real? You mean to tell me I'm imagining this? You mean to tell me them stock market prices ain't real? They're all in my head. You mean to tell me that the illegal immigration that have decreased because of decisions President Trump has made is, is not real. See, the way you gauge things, whether they're real or not, probably is if CNN uh, tries to either argue against it or for it. And all you have to do, good rule of thumb, is to believe the opposite of CNN. So if they're saying there's no problem at the border, then there's probably a big problem at the border. And if President Trump is saying that there's no problem at the border, um, then CNN, uh, CNN would be saying there's a problem at the border. You know, so they're the opposite of truth. All right. So now he goes on to say President Trump has squandered all of his reliability. Why is that, Brian? 
So if your skepticism was at like a seven before, it should be at a nine now. Because right. simply put, governments lie in wartime. This is okay. the headline from Reason Magazine, okay. Libertarian Magazine. So America and officials lie during wartime. Okay, now, remember, he's talking about past officials. Yeah, there was some questions about Iraq and all of that. And if he really wants to get honest and he's non-biased, he should be questioning what Barack and Hillary did when it came down to Libya. I mean, they pretty much just say, hey, ISIS, you want you want a hand up? You, you want to get in? Okay, we're going to go ahead and take out, you know, uh, Qadda not Gaddafi, but... Um, yeah, Muammar Gaddafi. We're going to go ahead and, and take him out. And so you guys can come in and just run the show. Um, so what was the justification of that? I'm just wondering. I mean, is he, is he highlighting them and all of those lies? I don't understand. But anyway, let's continue. It's true. Governments, it's true. American officials lie at wartime. And lies. But CNN lies all the time. See, that's the difference. Okay, maybe there are some lies at wartime. Some, but they lie all the time. That's their model. It's probably written in their charter. It's probably in the contract. All right, uh, so you're going to work here at CNN. Let me look at your paperwork. Everything looks good here. We need you to understand, though, this job does not require truth or real, you know, journalistic integrity. If you get where I'm going, no, I, I, I don't. How can I put it? We're here to share the news even if we bend the rules just a little bit, because the story is more important than the truth sometimes, right? Yeah, see, they're that person that if you're interviewing with them, you'll be sitting there going, well, what are you trying to say? And if you don't have integrity, you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. You know, but if you're a man or woman of integrity and you respect journalism, you'd be like, peace. So let's continue. Seems to be this current government's specialty. Oh. CNN's latest count found that Trump made. Now, here we go. Here we go. See, this is when the propaganda kick in. They're like, boop, boop, bring in the propaganda. Let's dump it out here, right here on CNN. So now he says, this is this administration's specialty. That means the whole administration from the top to the bottom, all they're about is lying, deception. You know, all of these things that Brian Stelter is about to alert us to. Let's listen in to little Brian Stelter. 90 false claims during the final two weeks of 2019. So wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me Trump made 90 false claims within the last two weeks of 2019, according to who? Diablos, the devil. I mean, CNN is the ones who are saying he made 90 false claims. Are we supposed to trust CNN? The, the, the station that's been lying on the president and taking things out of context through the whole time he's been in office. But yet... We're supposed to trust that these 90 lies in the last two weeks that CNN claim are lies are lies. That's what we're supposed to trust. Are you kidding me, man? I cannot believe this guy's nose is not growing so far that it comes through my little, you know, laptop right here and pokes me in the eyeball. That's how much his nose should grow from lying like this. Let's continue. Go back to his first day in office. Remember the first day? Trump said it was sunny when it was cloudy and rainy. Sunny, but I know people might think that's funny mm -hmm. when it's about the weather, but there is nothing amusing uh -huh. about this situation. Nothing amusing. Now, see, come on, Brian. Come on. Uh, I know it must be funny about the weather. See, see, this is the type of stuff that make us not respect CNN. OK. Or Brian Stelter. He's work. He's the bottom feeder of CNN. He's the catfish of CNN. He's swimming around the bottom, <laughs> eating stuff off the ground. You know, he's the parasite that eats off of other fish. Um, he's the jester, the guy that they send out to be the fool. Okay, guy, he comes out and they got the hat with the bells on the end. That's what he is right now. So this man right here, the same man that did a whole episode about President Trump's misspellings and said this was serious business. We need to, we need to be concerned about a president who misspells and doesn't double check what he's tweeting. And if he makes spelling errors, what other major decisions he might be wrong on. So now he's talking about the president's judgment of the weather when he first got in. I don't even know what Brian's talking about, but even if that is true, so what? So he's using that as leverage to build his case. Oh God, he's horrible. This about is... war. As many people have been pointing out this week, a crisis like this one crisis. is precisely when credibility is needed the most. What? And Trump doesn't have it. 
Book, I think reporters need to. So Trump doesn't have it. So wait a minute. Let me understand what Brian is suggesting. He is suggesting that Trump had no legitimate reason to make this decision, regardless of all the other elements, facts, uh, uh, stuff we can compare in his past as president to come to this conclusion. He's never recklessly said, let's jump into a war. He's never said, you know what? I got a feeling to do, kill people. He, in, fa in fact, he's always cautious of not killing people. So now what Brian Stelter wants us to believe is he goes from being very cautious of seeing individuals and, and people get hurt and killed, even when they might've deserved it, like when they shot down our drone. But what he's trying to get us to understand is that President Trump just woke up today and said, you know what? I feel like killing. What about you, Pompeo? You feel like killing a man today, too? Dude, you know it, man. Who you want to kill, President? Who you want to kill? Let me see. Let me see. Well, who is this dude? The salami dude. Him? Okay. You know what? Is he a bad guy? Yeah, you know, it don't even matter. How about this? Let's blow him off the map. That's what he wants us to believe. Like President Trump did not get no intel briefing, nothing. These men didn't sit down and say, President, um, listen, we have a uh, serious intel showing that he did it. And man, look, 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 I don't need to see all that. I don't need to say, what, look, man, kill this man, kill a man. Okay. Close the book. I don't want to read the intel too many details. Just kill this man. That's what he wants us to think. But yet no past evidence shows that that is how President Trump operates. But yet this propagandist right here is trying to convince us of that. And there's somebody, somebody out there watching this with the puppy brain, with the bubble head, sitting there with this all you hear. And they're like, well, I the President Trump's about to take us in the world. Reason, no reason at all. Let's continue. Boy being cynical. We have to avoid being cynical, but we have to question everything, especially with memories of the lead up to the Iraq war. Journalistic values demand that skepticism mm -hmm. and patriotism okay. demands it. Patriotism. <sighs> let's talk about patriotism. For a yes, let's do it. Don't be fooled by the propagandists. What? We're going to tell you to wear blinders. Now, here's the crazy irony of this. He's the propagandist. This is the guy is telling you don't date your boyfriend because he's no good but yet he got intentions of doing worse he's sitting there like hey man you know what i'm telling you i, I saw him at the club last night he was looking at some chick and i wouldn't do that to you my girl i'm telling you right now see that dude over there that dude he ain't no good he ain't no, me me i love you i love you baby that is who he is right now and yet he's talking about don't believe the propagandists this right here is propaganda 101 this right here is gaslighting 101 and yet he's telling us, don't believe them, please. In the Brian, days and Brian. weeks and months ahead. Come on, Brian. They're already starting to do this. Uh-huh. They're, they're already, already starting, starting to, to tell you, just rally around the flag. Just rally around the flag. But it is patriotic to ask for evidence. It is patriotic to question official accounts. And well, you know what else it is? It's patriotic to not side with Iran and a terrorist before you get even the facts. Him, CNN, MSNBC, all the Democrats, before they even heard the Intel Committee, uh, uh, the Intel briefing, they decided what President Trump did was reckless. And you know what? Me and Nancy and Chuck and all of them, we're going to go ahead and try to put restraints on the president's ability to deal with situations like that just for political reasons only just because what trump does we have to do the opposite or make it seem like everything he did was reckless crazy dangerous out of control and so now they're going to do something stupid like try to handcuff the president when he's trying to keep our country and our people in service overseas safe but now you got this unpatriotic person the same guy that works for a network that don't mention Christmas. They don't want to talk about the flag. They don't want to talk about all of the uh, 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 amendments, the first, second amendment, all that stuff. They want to downplay all of that. They get mad when people question uh, people's hatred towards patriotism, the flag. They don't want to participate in things that honor our military. This is the same guy that works for a station like that, and he's talking about patriotism. It's patriotic to question these things. It's patriotic to first say, well, no, 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 wait. Before I start saying that our president assassinated a terrorist, you know, before I start doing all of that, maybe I should wait for the briefing. That's what I'm talking about, but no, not Brian. 
Yeah, he's already setting the stage to undermine the decision of the president. I wonder if the public is being manipulated into a wider war. It is patriotic to ask, as Fox's Tucker Carlson did the other day, who's actually benefiting from this? Don't try to bring Tucker into this, okay? Uh, you know what? Th that's what bothers me. He trashes Tucker all the time, hates Tucker. But then, when they can get just a little bit of leverage to bring in, or well, see, even your own people believe this, Tucker still is a reasonable person. And I guess, I guarantee you, if the Intel committee presented their information that none of us have access to yet, including the ones that were out there saying Trump shouldn't have did this, this is ridiculous. If they presented that information and we see that Trump had to make that choice to save American lives, then I'm sure Tucker being a reasonable person would also say, well, yeah, you had to do that. You know, I think his concern is us being manipulated into an unnecessary skirmish, but let's wait for the information. And if the information doesn't get released to the public, I still, after ob observing President Trump up until now, I still trust his opinion. I trust his decision making. I trust his wisdom in the situation. I also trust the fact that he doesn't want unnecessary wars and it's been demonstrated by his past behavior. He's been very hesitant to do things like that. So now he wants us to believe he just now overnight became a cowboy out there like Yosemite Sam. I'm the most rooting this, tooting this, shooting this. Yeah. See, propaganda. Let's wrap this up. It is patriotic to hold our leaders accountable. But you're going to hear otherwise. You already are. It's already starting. <sighs> See, I so that's, that's his goal now is to try to undermine all the reasonable commentators and people who look at the situation and say, I don't see what the problem is. President did what he had to do, and he killed a bad person. This was not Mother Teresa. This was not some saint. This man was a double agent trying to play like, oh, I'm the general of a legitimate organization and government, but I'm also a terrorist, okay? So therefore, uh, you can't touch me, okay? Yeah, you can't hide under that title and still be committing terroristic acts. I don't care who you are, man. OK, so for little Brian Stelter and the rest of the critics, they can go somewhere and jump in a lake. That's how I look at it. For all of the SJWs who don't know really what's going on and all of the famous people who's claiming, look at America, they're assassinating people. And Iran is so innocent. And these, they don't realize that Iran can give a darn about your color over here. This is a religious ideology. They right now in their mind, and I'm talking about the leaders of Iran. Their whole mission is, okay, listen, our political and our religious beliefs need to be spread across and we won't tolerate anybody who has oppositional religious beliefs and all of that stuff. No, you're an infidel. Either you're down with the cause or you're not. And if you ain't, if we get our hands on you, we'll show you what we do to infidels. So for Colin Kaepernick and his big afro looking like a microphone, if he wants to go over there and show us how tolerant they are, go right on ahead. T.I., all of the rest of them that's weighing in, let's see you go over there and, and see them treat you with, with such respect and freedom because you're a person of color. Because your person, they don't care nothing about that. It ain't about no color and all that stuff. It's about what you believe, man. You ain't going to be over there uh, talking about football and I'm being disrespected and I'm taking a knee and I ain't loyal to the... They don't play that stuff over there, man. Same thing with little Brian Stelter and all the rest of the critics. So they can go and stuff a sock in their mouth. Now you heard it straight from Kevin from Kevin's school. I ain't want to do that. I'm down here in St. Louis trying to relax. I'm running late for dinner people downstairs having a good time waiting on me and I'm up here after listening to Little Brad Skelter. I had to stop what I'm doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that he's used to. Now, check me out every Wednesday night 7.30 live in Kevin's Corner. I'll be live tomorrow from St. Louis and um, check me out 7.30. Oh, wait a minute. That's going to be 7.30 their time. They're hour behind. So it's going to be 6.30 if you in, I think, Eastern Standard something like that. Um, so anyway, uh, but check me out. Um, Make sure that you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter. Um, I will be going live 7.30 on Facebook, on YouTube, and on my radio blog talk show. Hit like, hit share, hit subscribe, and the notification button. Make sure you still subscribe. Make sure your notifications are set to all. And then finally, if you want to donate to Kevin and Kevin's Corner, I'd appreciate it. There's a link in the bottom of the video to do that as well. And 
check out Extreme Tees, my sponsor. If you like something that they have, put my name, Kevin, in the promo code, you get a 20% discount. God bless you. See, I beat the clock. I'm under 20 minutes. Still got three seconds to spare. God bless.